All right, everything has now been embossed. So what we're gonna do is take a look at what our fully embossed perimeters look like. You can see we've got embossing here and embossing here. And we initially used the wood block to create the borders. And you'll notice that as we start to do that, there are some sections of extra material that can be trimmed. And so remember, you can always cut it shorter, but you can never cut it longer. So this is what we'd expect for our perimeter. So we can have a nice curve here to match that look. Now the problem is if you do all this in Sharpie, it can burn through your paint. So you want to make sure you know exactly how much of your perimeter you intend to trim off unless you intend for this section to be black. Okay. So I'm just making a mark and then I'm marking the furthest out that I want my material to be. And so then I'm going to use the Sharpie to show what that line looks like in a smooth curve to be trimmed off with the leather scissors. So again, we're marking just the very edge of our chamfer and then we're using that to indicate where we want a smoother transition to match our embossing, okay? And so as we do this, we can approach a tighter, cleaner design that reflects more of our body shape than um, maybe we had originally incorporated, right? So we're moving out these little corners and this one is the bad example of what we're trying to avoid because if we come too close, we may end up having excess material getting in our way. So now we're going to take our leather scissors and just trim off that little bit that we know we don't need in our design. so that all of our perimeters look close to the same distance from our embossing. So once again, you can always cut it shorter, but you can never cut it longer. So now we have our perimeter figured out. And the ultimate goal here is when we're doing extension and flexion, this section isn't cutting deeply into the tendon of my arm. And we're going to resolve some of that by curling this radius up so when I'm extending my wrist, that doesn't interfere. But we just want to make sure that as we're moving, we can still move our wrist and that this interior section of the leather isn't cutting into the tendon at my elbow joint. Okay.